Hi, welcome to Woman of the Week. I'm Shannon Catlett, and today I'd like to introduce our special guest. Her name is Vanessa Noel. She's an extraordinary shoe designer. She not only does designer evening shoes, she does bridal shoes, and she has a passion for shoes. Welcome to Woman of the Week, Vanessa. Thank you. So, Vanessa, you are really well known in the shoe industry, and um, when did your passion for shoes start to come out? Oh gosh, it started as far as I can remember when I was a child playing dress up with my mother's shoes and the high heels and tromping around the house and uh, finally it was when I was in college I actually started to draw, to draw and shoes. paint shoes. It's like people see shoes and, and lots of people have passions for shoes but sometimes they may not understand just how they're made. And I hope today you can explain, give us a little bit of insight into how a shoe is made. Sure I can. Actually, most people have no idea how shoes are formed. Mm -hmm. um, all my shoes are made in Italy, mm -hmm. and it's somewhat like a mannequin form that one would use for dresses or shirts. We have forms to get all the different shapes for shoes as well. Like your basic shape. Yeah, well, they're all different. If you have a pointy toe or a square toe, it's like the shape of one's body. Mm -hmm. And if you drape fabric around somebody's body, it's the same to get the shape of the shoe. Okay. Um, they're hard. They're originally made out of wood, and then they're made out of a resin. Mm -hmm. And there's over 100 different steps in actually making a shoe. Really? Really. It takes over. We leave our shoes. The form is actually called a last. And once the pieces are cut and actually nailed onto the bottom of the last, we leave it on for over 10 days in the factory. And it actually makes the shape. You ever wear shoes that become floppy right away? Yeah. They kind of lose their shape? It's because they're probably made in a couple hours in one day. But a real expensive shoe, a well-made shoe, should take a lot longer. It takes a lot longer, over mm. two weeks. We have steel injected into all our heels. Mm -hmm. And that's why the heel won't break under you when you're walking. Because we all have had those shoes that you've been looking cute running down the street and bloop, your, your heel just is <laughs> flying off. But that won't help happen with the Vanessa Noel shoe. God, we hope not. No. But it's, it's, it's quite exciting. I mean, I first started designing shoes when, and I actually wrote over 6,000 letters to Italian shoe factories. Mm -hmm. Flew to Milan. It was July. I rented my very first car. Mm. I'm in the airport thinking, what am I doing? I should just be home at a beach. You and know, how did I get involved in all this? Here I am. And went from factory to factory. Now, it's so funny. You were featured in a book called The Business of Bliss about women that pursue their passions and turn them into money-making companies. And, and you said a lot, you need to have an accountant, you need to be prepared. But in actuality, the way you started your company, you were just following your passion and you were sending out letters and you just went for it. There's so many different ways to, to start. Mm -hmm. um, what, what you read, I was trying to give a little bit of the rational and the reasonable behind it. I mean, starting company is somewhat like a fashion show. When you're in the audience and you're watching, it's beautiful, it's glamorous, but behind the scenes, Like what goes chaos into that. Mm -hmm. And so much work. So behind, actually, the final products. shoes and products and the beautiful stores and people putting them on and you're go getting dressed and going out, there's quite a lot of work going on. So you actually sent letters to all the manufacturers. You went over. And what did you do? You went to one factory and you start to... And uh, you learn the hard ways. You know, when you start off the way I did, you have nobody teaching you. You have, I'd never worked for a shoe designer before. I started designing shoes. The first shoes that came out um, didn't fit. Mm -hmm. I did everything in mint uh, alligator, red alligator, very <laughs> high heels. <laughs> All the basics one would need in a wardrobe from a brand new shoe designer. Mm -hmm. But people were watching. People were intrigued. Um, you have to s stick to it. That's the most important thing. If you truly have a passion for something and you love what you do, it comes out in the product. People will see it. They feel it. I'm sure when you were younger, you never imagined you would see the day that your shoes would be featured in Bloomingdale's and Bergdorf Goodman. I mean, you're actually an international company. And not only that, you have designed shoes for people like Oprah to wear to the Oscars. Um, you do wedding shoes for a lot of celebrities. It never hit me because when you're doing something and working so hard, um, until I did a personal appearance at Bergdorf Goodman. Mm -hmm. And the shoe salon is actually so small. 
and I looked around and I realized the labels that were there and then I thought about all those labels that weren't there and then I was part of this it, it began to you wanted make to me realize <laughs> oh my goodness and our celebrity list you know reads for I've been doing this for 15 years mm -hmm. now and it reads right along it's wonderful um, we are. We're across the country. We saw the Neiman's, Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom's. We got huge in bridal. And you're also in all the magazines. I see your shoes featured in Vogue and in Style magazine. You've been on Martha Stewart, you know, explaining how yes. a shoe is made. You've been on Oprah talking about your bliss for making shoes. So you've created quite a company here. And most recently, you started Vano.com. What is that? We launched this about a year ago. Um, this is actually, I call it, it's a bridge collection, but I actually call it a mini designer collection because it's not commercially mundane, which most bridge collections are. It's not working woman. This is when a working woman wants to come have home and fun. have fun. Okay. And uh, we actually were being knocked off quite a great deal from my couture collection. And I decided one day we were all talking. I said, well, I should have the right to do it first. Mm -hmm. And it bloomed. And mm -hmm. we started the Vano.com. It stands for Vanessa Noel. Okay. And we have so many phone calls every day asking if we have a website. So we decided to name the label the actual website. Okay, and it's Vano. like an informational website. So really, these are your fun shoes. These are probably the shoes you just completely do have your cre artistic and creative background, and you don't worry about what suit is in this season, what color it'll go with. You just go for well, it. <laughs> it comes out in that too. Um, sometimes we're too forward. Like we'll do something on a collection, and shoes are before clothing. Mm -hmm. So we're finished selling our winter market before the clothing is even walking down the runways for the winter market. Really? Because of the time that it takes to produce a shoe. Exactly. That's why you have to go first. That's why it takes so long. So it's very, it's almost backwards in a sense because then the buyers wait <clears throat> and they want to see what colors the fashion designers are putting into the clothing to see mm -hmm. what shoes go with it. But we're already there. We're already showing those colors. Now how has the shoe uh, industry overall been doing in this country? Is it a growing market? It's the number one country um, market in the world actually. Right now everything is the American market including clothing. Okay. But the shoe industry for the United States is much more fun than Europe. It's much more exciting. I mean Americans do so many different things. The women today, I mean I only do women's shoes but we go to work, we exercise, we go to the beach, we take care of our children, we go out in the evenings, we dress in many from jeans to black tie. So there's there's more opportunity for you to design different styles and types of shoes. And you know us American women, we need a shoe for every occasion. <laughs> every mood. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Where would one wear this fabulous print? Anywhere you damn well please. Right? With your little bow on the side. What is this fabric made of? It's actually a silk, and I actually found this fabric in London. It's, it starts off being black and white, and they heat treat it with the, the sparkles, and it actually turns this purple iridescent. It's gorgeous. And in the evening, it is absolutely phenomenal, because mm -hmm. it's much quieter in quiet lights, and then all of a sudden the light will hit it, and it just sparkles and comes to life. This is great. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. So who are some of your favorite celebrities that have worn your shoes for their weddings? I know you have a huge book in your showroom with almost oh. everyone. We started doing uh, bridal shoes actually during the Desert Storm period I in the that. early 90s. Mm -hmm. um, they were canceling all the evening parties in New York and if they weren't canceled due to our boys being off at war, they changed them from black tie to, you know, casual. casual. So, of course, this upset the fashion industry quite a great deal. My goodness, what are you going to do? And I had a store at this point in New York, and I racked my brains and I thought, oh, it's a, you know, people are not going out. Maybe they'll be happier with the person they're with. I'm going to do bridal. And that's when you launched your whole bridal. We launched the bridal, and since then, we've gotten people flying in on the red eye to buy bridal shoes. Um, Tons and tons of celebrities have gotten married in the bridal. And in bridal shoes, you, you do low slip-ons, you do high Everything. heels, you probably do bridal boots as well. We've done white satin cowboy boots, um, boots to hike up a mountain in white satin, sandals. Do you see any um, certain way that things are going, a direction in the bridal industry for shoes? Resort. 
Mm -hmm. There's a resort, but it's much more for bridal industry now. Um, instead of a wedding or bridal costume, girls are wearing what they want to wear. It's so their the trend personality. is like doing whatever you want. You don't have to do yeah. a white satin pump anymore. You don't, but they still do. Mm -hmm. It's still a white dress, um, but instead of a big full white dress, it now can be slinky. The trend actually in shoes is open toes. They don't want to wear stockings anymore. I like Mules, that. That looks open good. backs. So, you it's know, fun. I also want to talk about, I know you not only have your um, showroom and you design for stores across the country, you, you have a retail store in Nantucket as Correct. well. So tell us about that. That's very fun. That's been, um, had that since 94, and that's been my outlet for just doing whatever I want you to do. You want to do, not worrying about the buyer and nope. what they're going to like. You can just... Put it in the crazy. store, and we get such a mix of people from all over the country in Nantucket. And uh, it's very funny because when the industry and I talk to different designers and friends, and I say, you know, I have a store in Nantucket, they say, Nantucket? Why what Nantucket? Is? That's an island, you know, beach. And um, it, it's quite an island mm -hmm. and quite a beach. And people come in from across the country and all over the world. And it's such a, a wonderful shopping mecca. I mean, the, the people that come through there. It's probably also a little laboratory for you to see how people respond to different styles. Oh, because absolutely. if you're selling to a store, you're selling them what they want to buy. But well, when you have your own store, you really get feedback as to what direction people are going into. They pick and choose. Unfortunately, you find most um, stores, you know, they go somewhat what they consider as commercial. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to what's safer. So when you have your own store, I'm reopening in New York this spring, summer okay. coming up. And you can do what you want, and people then come to you personally they know your feeling your design your talent and they they feel comfortable and if they walk in and you tell them yes red velvet mule is going to be hot they, they don't have to wait for the september issue of whatever to come tell out them, like right now in style red is hot mm -hmm. and we showed a lot of red shoes and people were nervous is red going to be hot yes it is so but, now it is but then they're validated by seeing the magazine Absolutely. and they're like oh okay we'll do the red run in get the red so this is really great. I'm so happy you're here. Um, I also want to back up into how you got involved. Did you go to school for this? I know you say you sketch all the time. You have most of your designs in your head. And then you go to the factory and you just do it. But does one need to go to school to do this? It depends. I mean, my passion about shoe designing is the sculptural, the design aspect of the shoes. Um, I, you, that's born in you. I mean, mm -hmm. that's of the fine arts part. I went to Cornell University, fine arts major, architect. Yes. So you I had think, a background of architecture, absolutely. so you knew the construction part of it. Well, you know, proportions. Um, so that helps, I think it helps me. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, part of it, when I graduated from school, people were all applying, you know, off for jobs, and I was sketching shoes. They thought I was crazy. You just couldn't I get that out of your head. to design shoes. Mm -hmm. So you do. I mean, training is great, but it's not necessary. Okay, and there's, is not. there a school for shoe design? FIT gives a few courses. There are some courses in a school in Milan and in Florence. Um, but most of the shoe designers, you know their names today, never went to these schools. It just came out. It comes out. That's very interesting. And you have to just want to do it. And how many people do you have working with you? I know your company is quite large, and you're a young woman on your own. Do you have lots of assistants? Do you? It varies. Um, with the Vano.com collection, I have a, a new partner named Daniele Feli. Uh, he and I do it together. Mm -hmm. On the Couture collection, I'm the only designer. Um, and. There's about six people in the office, and it varies. It some tend, you know, they move around, and then there's a store in Nantucket. Okay, and then once you design that shoe, who sells the shoe? Do you yourself sell it to the retail store, or do you have people across the country that sell them for you? We have people across the country who sell them, and whenever I can, I'm right there with it too. When the shows are in New York or Las Vegas, I'm there. You do your I personal appearances. Yeah. Okay. I love talking to the buyers and trying to direct them and you know if I could be everywhere all the time I'd love to be in the stores I just told a store owner this past 
two days ago that if he wanted, I'd come in and help him on the weekend and I sell bet that's shoes. that's fun for and you, just to see your own shoe there. And isn't there also a national market in Las Vegas? In Las Vegas, twice a year. Okay, what's that called? WSA. And that's the Worldwide woman. Shoe Association. Okay, and that's where all the shoe designers come and then all the buyers come trying to explain this for the audience. <laughs> so then they see the selection and then they purchase the designer of their choice. There's four shows basically in New York and two in Las Vegas, and then there's smaller ones in Dallas and Atlanta mm -hmm. and Miami. But correct, all the buyers come in, and then our agents go on the road with the samples and try to go to people who couldn't make it into the shows. And how many st uh, samples and styles do you do a season? That varies too, anywhere from about 40 to 60. So you'll come up with a big collection of 40 to 60 styles and maybe perhaps you'll end up manufacturing half of them? Uh, yes, actually when the collections are smaller, mm -hmm. we normally um, pr start putting into production almost all of them. Okay. Um, because it's something where I just felt so strongly on these few patterns and you didn't need any extra. Okay. So So you go with your instinct, you know what to get into and what you really want to get booth, behind. This booth, the tall one you picked up, mm -hmm. we've done that in everything from alligator to ostrich, suede, leathers, and these fabrics. Okay. So they can, the collection's sort of fun because things can change and move and, mm. and stores can be unique. Now how high do your heels go? I see some of these are, this isn't that high, but it's quite thin. <laughs> that's about four inches. Okay. So that's, we go up to about four and a half inches, and that's the tallest, that's the tall. very high. And the average? And they're usually, the, these are the heel heights that we usually do, because we do a lot of shoes for the Oscars. Okay. And uh, they want to be tall. I saw the shoe that you designed for Oprah, and that was quite stunning. We How did you get chosen? to do that shoe or did she She just... wanted our shoes so she came and they selected a whole slew of what we had and we sent them out there and she picked and we do quite a number of shoes for Oprah. Because she's, she's a shoe fanatic. She so. loves them and she wears them well. She does, she does. So where do you hope to go with this collection and with your company? Is there something more you'll do with the shoes? Uh, we have something else in the works, but it's a uh, big secret, Top secret, but I will launch it with you. Okay. Um, it's very exciting, and at the moment, I'm just absolutely thrilled and very, very happy. We're reopening a new store in New York. And where will that be? 64th, right off Lexington, between Lex and 3rd. Okay. And the wholesale showrooms are going to be on top. And uh, it's a I, townhouse, isn't it's it? It's a whole townhouse. It's it's one of the most exciting projects. I mean, it's you know I'm learning all you know now about air conditioning zones and and different codes that you have in the city. But it's it's wonderful. It's a brand new home for the shoes. It's like a new place for your children. So you'll be able to design the space from top to bottom to be a home for your shoes. Absolutely. And the designing of them. So we can't wait till that opens, and then as soon as that opens, hopefully we'll be able to announce uh, the next your new direction. Big direction. So you are international. Do you only make your shoes um, in in Italy, or only in Italy? Only in Italy. And do you sell to stores around the world? Yeah, we do. We're in Italy. We're in uh, Germany, and we just uh, did a whole lot of work. We're going to be in Malaysia, Japan, Singapore. Is your family involved in the shoe business? Oh, no. This is one thing my mother always told me when I was a child. You know, I don't know what you want to do when you're older, but just don't go into fashion. R was she involved in fashion? No. She just didn't My father was a doctor. Okay. Uh, he's now retired, and he's a wonderful businessman. And uh, my passion was the arts, and uh, my mother was a wonderful mother. And after I opened up, I opened up with my first store is how I started. Mm-hmm. And after about a week, I called my parents. I said, no one told me I had needed books, keeping bookkeeping. No one ever they thought we thought you knew. I said, who would tell me? So you just went I'm a designer. I love the story about how when you opened your first store, the owner of the building was like, forget it. Don't even waste your time. This isn't going to work. I had gotten the space through a real estate broker, and it was actually Mr. Gallo of Gallo Shoes, who I adore. I call him like Father Shoe. Mm -hmm. And when I went to pick up the keys, he wanted to give me my check back. He just told me I was too young, and I was a young girl, and I was going to lose all the money. And I got upset, and I said, if I was a man, 
at this age, you would give me the keys, you wouldn't even have this conversation. He said, so you okay. just went right Off, ahead forward and you did it. So that's yeah. another thing I think people should recognize when you really have a desire or a passion, you have to, you owe it to yourself to pursue it. And I'm sure along the way you've had so many people tell you, don't bother, it can't oh. be done. When I first opened, I went to so many parties and social functions and mm -hmm. clubs. I mean, we actually put a rollaway bed in the, uh, in the basement of the store. I thought if I was tired, I could take a nap. That soon got moved <laughs> out. Um, I was used to jet setting to England all the time for parties, even flew to Hong Kong for a party. Mm -hmm. My whole life changed. Friends said, oh, she won't last a year. Others said, Give, she'll last one year, she'll get married and quit. Oh, you um, mean your friends at the time seeing you start your business? Nobody would believe it. Okay. Uh, life did change. Uh, all of a sudden, the business became much more exciting than the parties. Okay. And the nightlife. And I wanted to be alert during the morning, and I wanted the phone calls, and I wanted to get into it. I mean, even now, you know, weekends, I work seven days a week. So you were, like, impassioned and enthusiastic uh, to get to work every day. Very much. Now, do you find it hard to maintain your personal life as well as your business life? I know you say you work so hard seven days a week, but you just, you love it so much. I love it. Uh, yeah, you get exhausted in the evening and, and actually, you know, going out on a new date doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. you want to look your best and be up, so you tend to sort of say, oh, make an excuse, you know, go home and get some sleep. But you meet lots of people during your your work, too. And you make your business your priority. Yeah. I mean, there's still lots of things I'm going to and functions. And, you know, maybe you don't stay out as late. And uh, you come home a little earlier. And But it's it's great fun. So how do your friends respond to you now? Oh, now they say they've known it all along. They knew you could do it. They knew you <laughs> oh, could absolutely. do it. Oh, absolutely. Now they, you know, I'm introduced as this is, you know, the famous shoe designer. and. You know, it's exciting when you go out and you see a lot of people at these functions in your shoes. And can you recognize your shoes? I mean, these you can recognize a, a mile away. In a second, absolutely. So you probably get an overwhelming feeling every time you see that. Oh, you do. And uh, it's, it's exciting. You walk up to a street corner and you're waiting for the light to change. You look down, you see your shoes. I mean, you want to sort of tap the person on the shoulder and say hi. And it must be really <laughs> exciting to do bridal because I know even when I've been at your showroom, people come over crying at the last oh. minute they need a shoe. What's it like to work with brides? Well, it's actually very passionate to work with brides because it's something that they need. They're not just shopping. Uh, it's something which it's difficult for them to find, and this is their possibly, you know, their one their day one in their life day. that mm -hmm. they've been waiting for. Uh, so when you get the right shoe on them and they're comfortable and they love it, it's such it's like a, a wonderful feeling. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. So, do you think that? I mean, these 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 high heel shoes are going to stay in fashion. Do you think that these lower, like these are like driving shoes, or these things to me, that are just it's for lifestyle. today? Lifestyle. You know, the same woman would wear both of these. Mm -hmm. You know, you wake up and you go buy orange juice around the corner. You throw in your jeans. This is perfect. Stepping off of your private jet. This is perfect. <laughs> I know I have one. I'll come pick you up in it. <laughs> and maybe you get dressed up and you go out in the evening and a simple little black dress or a white dress and you put this on, you're done. You feel very made up, at least on your feet. And what about these mules? I mean, these were popular back in the 40s or 50s, was it? What the, era are these from? We actually have done mules on every single collection I've ever done. You've ever done, because I know they used to be popular and then they came back and now you seem to be adding little novelty pieces to it. Which is, it's very fun. The, the exciting thing is um, the shoes actually wear, you wear the shoes, mm -hmm. the shoes don't wear you mm -hmm. in, in the case of my designs. When you put this on, these are novel pieces and they're wonderful sculptural fun pieces, but actually when you put the shoe on, it doesn't detract from your leg. And you know, your shoes are, are featured in a museum in Germany and these actually do look like art pieces. Thank you. So what, what do you have over in Germany in that museum? Is it just a there's, sandal or a... There's some shoes and there are also some shoe paintings I did mm -hmm. over there and there are actually some pumps and some mules. Okay. I mean, I've never really seen shoes with these type of details. Even here you have a real interesting little weaving on your snakeskin. On the snakeskin. 
This is, you know, the details are very um, important for the psyche of the woman buying the shoe, the fun of it, the love for it, but it's also the cut. The, mm -hmm. It has to be comfortable. If mm -hmm. a shoe looks great, doesn't feel wonderful, it's terrible. Because it's like here, this is a comfortable shoe, but you've added a great little detail by putting that pink rope around the edges. And then I see this is a real interesting heel sling back like I have on. So what is this called? That's actually, it is, it's a halter sling. A halter and it's a little sling. Sabrina heel. Sabrina. <laughs> and this was, um, the python was in the snake was very big this season. So we actually did the silk and had the sequins applied on top of it. I mean, is that one of your known uh, distinctions, like putting sequins and adding little bits of jewels to your shoes? Uh, I actually am known for all the different fabrications and finding these wonderful things. Um, woo. Well, that's all right. <laughs> It'll have to be all right. <laughs> so you can here sit on the ground. we have a wonderful, what is this feather? These are feathers we did, and this actually, um, one of the things that aren't that there are very, very few women who actually design the shoes. And our shoes are also not only known for the fabrications, but for the comfort. Okay. And I think it's because I'm a woman and I wear my own shoes. And I know how they feel on and what the pressure points are. And even if you go out in the evening with a heel this high, you will find them very comfortable. Because you've done something with the step of it and just the whole and shape and the design to make sure it's comfortable for your correct. foot. And so this was actually a, a mule we did for this winter. Okay. And because it is a winter mule, so we brought the feathers up so it's a little bit more closed up. Mm -hmm. But they're very flexible too, so if you have a very high, you know, instep, instep. and arch, it won't bother you. Are there very few women that design shoes? There actually are. That's interesting. That's interesting. So we've gotten to see some of Vanessa's collection here we feel very fortunate and we only have a minute left is there anything you'd like to leave our audience with now that you've educated us educated us on the making of shoes and starting your company sure I mean it's just if you if there's something you want to do in life go and do it and if it doesn't work and you know don't give up keep going keep trying that's the only way to succeed and enjoy I, every moment of it. I know. I think some people spend their whole lives searching for that one thing that will to wake them up like that and impassion them. So I'd like to thank you for joining us here at Woman of the Week. I'm your host, Shannon Catlett. And thank you, Vanessa. Thank you very much, Shannon. Okay. It's a pleasure. <laughs>